Hello, Donna here. Welcome to my channel. Now, today's uh, tutorial is, well, uh, making and packing half of a dragonfly. Now, the total dragonfly then will be, the cane will then be reduced a bit, cut, and then the two sides put together. And this, when I'm building something that's symmetrical, is always what I try to do. I would rather build half and put it together. This strategy is not without potential hazards, however. The hazard being when you get it back together, you might not get the two halves in perfect registration. And so, you know, you just have to be a little aware of that. And when you reduce the halves, you have to be kind of careful and try to reduce very, very straight. And when you reassemble, you have to pay very close attention to the way the two halves come back together. Now, I started by making this cane, little spear cane, and I have a tutorial on that. If you don't know how to make a cane like this, then please watch it. Now, I have so many canes that I just, you know, this cane came about because I have so many canes and I just wanted to use them all. Storage becomes a big problem for me. So I made this cane. And, um, you know, on a tile, I put this triangular piece of clay. That is the maximum size that I want to build this cane, the maximum. So I cut a slice off and I positioned it on this piece of clay. And if you watched my kaleidoscope tutorial, it do the same thing there. You cut pieces off of the elements you're going to use. You arrange them the way you want them. And it's nice having this sort of palette to work off of. Um, this cane is actually from my mud cloth uh, series and it is very old. I reduced it and see how skinny it is? Well, because this is a mirror image cane, of course, this is going to be thin because what I found in putting together the other uh, dragonfly canes I made was that the body tended to be to get very thick or thicker than I wanted. So that's why I decided I would make it very thin to start with, knowing the chances are it's going to get thicker. Now, this is the eye, and this is also another spear cane, but it's only black and white. I think there's maybe a green outline around that white. Now, this second wing is, of course, just this reduced. So I actually took the spear cane, reduced it out to about four inches, four inches, four inches, and then uh, I cut two inches off, and that left approximately an inch. So off of that remaining inch I reduced and made this cane so um you know the exact percentage the exact size is not going to be the same for you because it depends on how big this cane is to begin with but just reserve some and then reduce it to make that second wing so here is the the arrangement all the elements fit in this triangle now, the one thing that you ha might have a problem with is knowing how much clay you need to pack around the elements. This can be problematic if you're mixing a custom color. That's why when you first start caning, it's not a bad idea to use package colors as your background colors. Use white, use black, use whatever package color you might have, or, uh, make sure that that background color is quite easy to mix. So let's say you wanted to make a powder blue. Maybe you take a package of uh, ultra blue and you mix it with two packages of white or something like that. Anyway, make sure that you have a repeatable uh, recipe to make that background color. Now, I am doing this a slightly different way. I mixed this blue and it was a lot brighter. So I added orange to it to knock down the uh, the blue and gray out the color a bit. I much prefer this color to a much more clear uh, powder blue. So that's what I did to make this color. Then I rolled it into two thick 
cylinders that are the same height as the canes. And I'm trying to figure out if this is enough clay. And I think it's going to be really close. I don't know if it's going to be quite enough, but I'm going to continue. Once I know that I don't have quite enough of this, I take whatever remaining pieces I have and I'm going to add white to it so that the difference between this and the next color isn't going to be so critical or so tremendously different. Okay, so let's start building our cane. I like building, oh, I'm going to lift this a bit. I build a lot using wedges. And that's what I will do here. Because I'm not terribly good at editing yet, uh, I will let this run till 10 minutes and then I am going to cut and we'll start a new part. Someday I will be very good at editing. So I'm going to fill the space between the wings. And of course, trying to reproduce what I have here. Perhaps it's a little more open. Oh, I think that's good and close. Now I'm going to take the wedge and reshape it so that it fits the space. Draw the center of the wedge up. So you just want to keep comparing how you're shaping with the shape that you're trying to fill. Okay, so I think this isn't bad in terms of filling, but I'm going to take this side and I'm going to stretch it out so that it goes as far as the point. And it doesn't have to be thick. I just want an uninterrupted line of the packing clay here along both sides of our cane, of our two canes that are meeting. And by doing this, it just ensures that I won't have an, a jag here along this, uh, along this side, okay? So I think I'm gonna have to make it a bit longer, stretch it out a bit more. Because, of course, once you start reducing, the clay is going to move to fill and uh, it goes where it wants to go, not where you would like it to go. Okay, so let's see if that'll do it. Now, it also got a little taller, so I'm gonna push it down a bit. Got quite a bit taller. And perhaps this seems a little fussy, but you know, I have resorted to pecking my canes this way. I think for me, it works better. 
and you definitely have fewer air pockets. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to lay this down. And I think this is going to go straight across about right there. Trying to make it nice and straight. position the second cane like so and you can see that this tip sticks out a little farther they're not in exact registration there do both sides the bottom cane protrudes beyond the top cane Okay, that's good. Now, because I'm a little concerned about the amount of packing clay I have, I am going to take and cut this bit and set it aside. Like so. Check this side as well. It's a lot less extra clay on this side, but I'm going to keep a little pile just in case. Okay, oh, I'm at 12 minutes. I'm cutting and I will be right back. All right, I'm back. Now I took a wedge same size as this one, and I just reshaped it so that it fits in this space. All right, so let's fit this in. Let me turn it. Okay. Make sure this is straight. And you know what, I want to make sure everything is in proper registration, like so, like it was. And then put it in. Like so, I think that's pretty good. This side, I want to pull that point up a bit and put that there. Now it's curving a bit, I don't know if you can tell. So what I'm gonna do is put it flat this flat on my work surface and push the packing clay around it. Once again, I'm just going to take and trim away some of the excess like so. because I definitely want to make sure that I have as much of this packing clay available as possible. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, so how are we doing? That looks good. Looks good. All right, now let's work on the eye. Now, I should actually fill these little tiny spaces in. So I think I will do that. I'm taking... I need more room. I need more room. Why don't I just take an angled cut like that and see if that will fit in the space. And it does. Stand it up. Just carefully try to remove any excess. Okay. All right. Now let's put the eye in. I know, I think I'm going to have a space to fill then. But let's just get that eye in first. Okay, now if you look at our pattern, the eye, um, there's no separation between the wing and the eye, but I don't think that's critical. So I am going to create a space, a small space, by wrapping the eye with a very thin sheet of the background color. And I rolled this through, it says five, but you know what, I'm gonna make it thinner. <laughs> So this is six. This is six. Now, this cane, as I was reducing, twisted because it's like this on one side and it's like kind of the opposite, right? Like that. And then the eye moved. I don't really care that much. <laughs> About that. If the eye's a little lopsided, it's actually fine with me. Okay, so that's where it's going to go. But I would like to put a thin sheet of the background color across the wing. So I'm just going to mark lightly with a needle where I want it to go.
Okay, let's put the eyeball in. Let's put the eyeball in. Right there. And the, the extra clay did push the eyeball a little bit farther up and a little bit farther out. But I think that's okay. All right, now I'm gonna cut and fill in the space under the eye. Use the same strategy here. Make an angled cut. insert it where I want it to go and really push it in there fill that space up good seems to want to pull out <laughs> Do this twice so I'm gonna pull this back down like so Okay, one more piece. Oops. One more. No, it's not the most perfect thing. And what may happen is the eyeball may be a little bit misshapen, won't be perfectly round. To tell you the truth, I don't think it's gonna matter much. Okay. All right. I mean, in nature, there's not gonna, you're not going to find a dragonfly like this in nature. This is just our version of a dragonfly. Okay, so now I am going to cut and I'll be back. Now it's time to add the antenna here, here. You can see that it curves, not a 
very extreme curve, but it's a gentle curve. And then it's attached to the eye like that. Um, but you know, it sits above the wing. So here we go. It's about the thickest setting of the pasta machine. Now I have wrapped it with um, a very thin sheet, but and I don't think it's going to make any difference. So I'm just going to go with the thickest setting. And I'm going to cut, make an angled cut and insert it right there between the eye and the wing. And it looks to be a little extreme, so I'm gonna cut again and make it a little less angled so it fits the space better. That is better. Okay, let's cut the excess off. angled so it'll be a little easier to go around the wing. Okay, here we go. Now, to make this curve, you know, I think I am just going to wrap it around one of the wedges like so. Just like this. Okay, and then going to cut straight down this way, cut the excess away, and now very, first I'll just take a pretty big cut. But then I'm going to cut, and what I'm going to try to do is cut from here, this edge, to this edge. I used to pack my canes mostly with sheets and rods. And I think that that's a good way. I mean, it, it worked fine, but those sheets, the sheets didn't create a lot of air spaces, but the rods sometimes do. So I'm finding that shaping wedges like we've done so far, just taking and creating wedges off of big, big cylinders and filling spaces that way is actually working out much better for me with uh, a lot less distortion. And you know, it's not difficult to do. All right. Okay, so let's position the antenna next to the eye. Over the wing, like so. All right, so what has happened here? I just want to show you the difference. So you can see the antenna is actually a little farther away from the um, the top wing uh, where it meets the eye. Well, actually, you know what? I'm, I lied to you. No, it isn't. 
It really isn't. I don't know. I should have my glasses checked, maybe. Okay, so this is good. This is good. Hello. Okay, so now we are right on target. We're right on target. So now it's just a matter of filling up the remaining spaces. So let's do it. Let's do it. Now I am going to cover this top wing with a sheet. going to push that down in there. And then cut the excess. Okay. got some spaces here. I'm not really liking that. So I think what I'm going to do because I can always change, right? Is I'm going to remove some of this and I think I will insert maybe a bullseye cane, maybe something. Sort of makes it seem more like part of the body. I was also concerned that there would be a, quite a large area here of just the background color. And that might look a little weird. Like, what is that space doing in that dragonfly? A little bit, I think, is fine, but uh, too much looks like, well, she made a big mistake there. And see, there was quite a lot of this blue. You can see, look, I haven't even hit any of the canes yet. So that tells me that there was way too much of that blue. And it would look, wouldn't look right. I think this is a better side to look, that space. So let's fill it up. Now, what am I going to fill it up with? I have so many canes here, but of course, none are actually prepared for this purpose. So I'm going to cut and I will be back. I'm back. I found a nice little bullseye cane and um, it's still around. 
but of course when it flattens it'll become a semicircle and when it meets it'll be these well you can imagine it will turn it will form something that's more or less round okay okay we are ready to continue packing see ta-da it got a little squashed but it's fine okay let's continue gonna take uh, the other cylinder we're going back to our wedge strategy okay now i got a actually i think i'm gonna do a sheet here i think it's still easier don't want to make my life harder Sorry, I was off camera. I think I'm gonna move my camera closer to me. My camera, it's my iPhone. All right, I'm gonna roll one more sheet and it's gonna be a bit thinner, I think. Okay, we're getting there. Now, this space, then I have to bring this out to a point, 
might need a bit here, need some here, and draw it down to a point. And first, let's compare, because I believe that at this point, I'm going off of the top. All right. So let me trim some of this top off. Could do it at the end, but um, I just like doing it as I'm working. The thing is, at the end, we really will, I will have to uh, refine the shape anyway, but this gives me a much better idea about the size and how much more clay I have to add. To finish packing. Okay, so I'm going to take another wedge. This one I cut a little crooked, cutting it in half. And this time I'm going to reshape it a bit. I really did go off kilter here. Just trying to fill that space. Okay. Now let's trim the excess away. Pretty good. Okay, got that corner. Now let's work on the next one. Take this other wedge.
And if you notice spaces like this, I think you saw where the air, it, it was, it wasn't totally smooth on this plane, on this side, because when you pushed in the clay, actually, there was not enough clay in the space. So you see that happening. Of course, you just add clay. And then you cut the excess away like so. This side is better. Okay. So I've almost got that corner done. Okay, so now I'm going to fill this space in. Just by taking one of the wedges and pulling it out. Because, of course, this curve, this curve is more extreme than the one I'm trying to fill. So I want to make it more broad, wider, like so. Of course, as I work, I make them longer too, so kind of helpful to compress it back down to size. All right, so now I think you understand how these things get packed. You see a space and you reshape a wedge to fill it. Now, I'm going to have to build this up to the corner like so. I have to fill this space like this. And for this purpose, I think I will go back to sheets, uh, thick sheets to fill. Here, I can probably use the back of a wedge first. Let me prepare this space like so but I can probably mm -hmm. first fill it this way Like so. 
cut the excess off. Now, I wouldn't say I'm an expert packer because I wouldn't say I'm an expert caner. Um, I just try to figure out ways of making my life a little easier when I am called upon to perform these tasks. All right, so I've got a little space here to fill, and you saw how that gets filled with sheets and angled cuts. So I will do the rest of it, and uh, then I'll be back. Well, here we are. It's all packed, and it got a bit larger, but not that much. It pretty much I stuck to my pattern, which is good. So now I'm going to reduce it and I'm going to do a lot of like that, right? Just to get everything moving again, like so. I do a lot of that on both sides. Just push that puppy down like that. And there'll be a lot of squeezing like this and there'll be a lot of this and there'll be a lot of this corner stretching action and then i'll go back to this okay so it, it's going to take me a while so i'm not going to shoot it i'm just describing to you some of the various things that are going to happen to the dragonfly as it is reduced. Okay. So I will be back because I don't think anybody wants to watch this for however long it takes because it's going to take a while. Okay. Wish me luck. I'll be back. Back again. I have reduced the cane and here you see here you can see what it looks like after i reduced half put the halves together reduced it a bit more this is the good the best end and then uh the other end looks like this it's not too bad it's just a little bit distorted in the shape of the wings and the eyes aren't quite as well placed, but this is perfectly usable, I think. Now, this is the amount of waste I had. Oops. This is my waste. And I would have had less, but I got tired of reducing it. So I thought, well, I'm just going to have more waste because I want to get, I want to get this moving. And I didn't want to take a lot more time, but you can see. Actually, that was quite a big chunk. I This didn't necessarily have to be waste, and it's so thick I can probably cut a few slices and put them together. But anyway, the rest of this is waste. And then here it are the finished slices the good and the bad end which isn't actually too bad okay so that's it this uh this tutorial has been about packing primarily about packing i guess um and once again if you don't know how to make this cane please go to the tutorial on the uh, spear cane Okay, that's it. Have a great day. Bye.